what's going on it's your boy buddha back in the building for something i know you guys are excited about something i am very excited about and that is the information drop on roy mustang for the last cloudy a full metal alchemist collab we've been waiting we've been patient we have been contemplating what could Roy be. Is he going to be long range physical DPS, which is my guess? Is he going to be a fire mage? Is he going to be some kind of hybrid? We've all been able to make our own assumptions, but now we have the details. This video, let me go ahead and drop it a like, has already blown up. I mean, it's, it was posted about five hours ago, six hours ago. It's already got a thousand views, which is awesome for the uh, Last Claudia channel. I'm very excited to check this out. I don't want to spend too much time on this intro. Just know that we're about to see what part two of FMAB brings. Starting now. Roy Mustang, baby! Dope artwork. As always, here we go. We've got... Okay, I want to pay attention to hit counts. Because tweaks really laid it out how important they are uh, so let's go ahead and actually do a little more deep dive of what his hit counts actually look like uh, see if we can count it out so here we go one two three four so so that's not a lot at all if that's the case let's go ahead and go back a little more one two three four i don't know if a couple other numbers are procking on those hits because sometimes you'll see a player hit but then multiple hit counts will occur. You know, in these we obviously can't see the hit counts, but right there, unless we're looking at a dual wield amount that's popping up, I'm counting four. Might be a little more than that, but that is not a lot. I imagine it's more than four, but it's definitely not like a top tier skill, like, you know, eight to 10 hits, I don't think. Let's see, that is a lot more. <laughs> That is a lot more. I actually, I can't count this stuff. Well, look at this, eight. It says eight here, but you also gotta think it's counting all of the enemies that it's hitting at the same time. But unless there are like, I don't see any extra damage numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's either six or seven hits. So we got four. I can't count. I can't count for shit. <laughs> so uh, let's see what his last uh, S3 looks like. I'm sorry, what? That's a literal machine gun. What? Look at this. We can actually see his skill stock is one, which isn't... It doesn't upset me because right we're going to be relying on his alchemy mechanic to spam these skills without the use of skill stock there's something interesting to note right here but that skill looks like it has a ton of hits and if that's the case roy mustang is a very interesting character oh here we go and here is the ultimate his special such a dope scene, bruh. I need this guy. I need this guy. And we have his traits, everybody. Let's check out Roy Mustang. Max level traits. We've got Flame Alchemist. Fire attack damage plus 40%. Fire damage cap plus 4,000. When using a skill with alchemy, damage plus 20%. And damage cap plus 2,000. So... Fire, physical, attack. Well, yeah, um, that's what I'm getting from this. Because fire, attack, damage, that actually applies to both physical and magic. But when using a skill with alchemy, right? Homeboy's going to be a long-range physical DPS. With a nice little 6k damage cap and 60% damage if you're using alchemy skills. Then number two, we've got Hero of Ishval. Physical attack damage plus 6% per enemy. Up to 36%. When defeating an enemy, slash every 30 seconds from battle start. 
physical damage cap plus 400, max plus 4,000, and this does not reset over time or each wave. Oh, doesn't reset, you say. Wow. So on kill, he's getting these buffs. So let's say you, you need to kill 10 enemies to get his max damage cap. And you need to kill six enemies to get his physical attack damage percentage increase. So there you go, physical attack DPS. The writing was on the wall. I, I, I severely doubted that they were going to make someone who uses alchemy skills, right? Using MP to use your skills, also want to use MP for spells. It just didn't make sense in my head. So here we go. His second trait gives him that physical attack damage after you kill six enemies. But after you kill ten enemies you get 4,000 extra cap. Or, you wait 30 seconds. Every 30 second interval, so 300 seconds is about what? Five minutes you'd have to wait in total to get his damage cap without actually killing any enemies. And that's quite a long time to wait. Most fights, unless you're fighting Zlorg or end game world bosses don't require you to use up more than five you know five minutes but it's still a really nice effect that he he gets this damage cap even if there are no enemies granted you're probably not going to see the full four thousand but it's still an option like it's not just if there are no if it's a one boss stage right if you're fighting his lord and you're not reliably killing the spirits that he's summoning you can still get this damage cap over time. It's not completely dependent upon enemy kills. So, a nice touch. I wish it wasn't 30 seconds, but I mean, that probably would have been just too busted if they did that. Still. So, when this dude is fully built out, he's got 10,000 damage cap. And he's a long-range PDPS, based on the skills that we looked at. Kyle who? <laughs> At least for PvE. So, wow. Wow. Dude's coming in here. I mean, if you... That's almost... With all of his trait passives active, he's he's got plus 100% damage. Plus 96. But rounded up to 100% damage right off the rip. Okay. His abilities, or S1s through his special... Skill 1 is a bit well done. Medium area, medium range fire combo attack. So he's going to need to get in the line of sight of the enemy or at least get within a certain medium range to launch off this skill. As we saw, not too crazy on the hit counts, I don't think. Then skill two, I'll turn you into cinders. A wide area fire combo attack centered on units. So kind of like Zekus where he uh, his skill two drops those like ice spears all around him. That's kind of be that's going to be what this skill two is. And then skill three. You shut up. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to shut me up. Wide area, long range, fire combo attack centered on target. Chance to lower enemy fire resistance. There were a lot of hits from what I saw. And if that fire resistance lowering is a per hit chance, even if it's a small like 5% chance, we may see some crazy, crazy stuff. You know, anytime you're cutting an elemental resistance and you're not using Trishula, you're looking at something that could be considered stupidly broken. And it's on his skill three of all things. Honestly, what I'm excited for and what I hope, you know, wide area, I'm hoping that Roy Mustang can be my Insta uh, <laughs> IGC three clear. That would be great. If just one skill three and the whole board is white, kind of like, uh, V's S1. That's what I'm hoping for here, but uh, the damage implications seem pretty crazy. Then we've got his special, I'll kill you until you are dead. Wow. It's a bit redundant. And that's just a fire, uh, powerful fire combo attack to all enemies, so a nice AoE special. <sighs> okay. Now we get to see the good stuff. What are we looking at? All right. Time for the skill board. The meat. The juice. 
I am excited. I'm nervous. I mean, he's already going to be stupid. They can't really mess him up, I don't think. So let's check it out. First, he has alchemy, of course. When a skill stock is zero, consume MP to use the skill. He's also got platoon commander. At the battle start, apply strength and int plus 25% buff to all allies. So it looks like if I'm uh, taking a making an educated guess off that, he is going to scale off of strength and intelligence. We'll have to see what that looks like exactly in game after some testing. Then we've got flames of revenge. When attacking an enemy's fire weakness, damage plus 20%. If an ally is incapacitated, fire damage plus 30%. Homeboy is going to be capping on everything. These multipliers are insane. Insane. He's got a pseudo weak point boost in him with that Flames of Revenge. And then he also just gets plus 30% if an ally goes down. And we've got State Alchemist, which we saw on Edward. MP consumed by Alchemy minus 20%, which is great. And we've got Don't Give Up on Living. When an ally takes lethal damage, heal that ally for 50% HP and apply a Strength Intelligence plus 25% buff. Is that the same as Ed's? I don't think it is, actually. I think Ed's is like 100% heal for, for an incapacitated ally. And then a Strength Int plus 35% buff. So... Still incredible, but not as good as Ed's. It's kind of like the tier below Ed's version. And we've got Hawkeye's cover. Skills special have a low chance to deal a very powerful fire extra attack and an ultra low chance to insta-kill enemies. So I don't know what ultra low chance is, what that equates to. Like, is that 1% chance? But still, he's got Death God in that skill, and he has... A very powerful fire extra attack. If that's kind of like bronze, where it's like, what, 100 to 150% damage on that extra attack. Granted, it's going to be of the fire element, but it shouldn't matter. Because it sounds like you want to bring this guy when you are fighting any enemies weak to fire. This guy, this guy is, I mean, literally. It's been done already beyond belief. But this, Roy is going to like melt Pablo. It's not even going to be funny. And then he comes with Fire Mega Drive. So Fire, Physical Attack, and Special Damage plus 30%. And then another Fire, Physical, and Special Damage cap plus 2,000. So Homeboy's got 12,000 cap if you're taking advantage of all of them. If you've killed 10 enemies or you've waited the time, if you're using Alchemy skills, you've got Fire Mega Drive active, dude's got 12,000 cap. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. All right, let's see what they gave him on skills that we already know. He's got Pose of Glory. Great. Illusion. All right. Ale of Honor. All right. Magic up four. Arcane up three. Wisdom's Protection. Reinforce. Awaken. Piercing. Weak point boost he comes with. Uh, Revenge Aura. Sharp Eyes. Auto Aura. Auto Haste. God damn. Arcane up four. Auto Regeneration. Goddess Kiss he comes with, Fire Attack Raise 2, Human Slayer, and Thaumaturgy Ring. <laughs> so you want to build this guy's intelligence. They literally told us that with this kit. This guy. This guy. You want to talk about free-to-play friendly, new player friendly characters? You don't even need to build this guy's SC up. You just max out his board. Give him dual wield. He is, he's going to be hitting like a truck for new players. With a 12,000 damage cap and that S3 looking like it has so many hits. And with how spammable it, it is, it's going to be. If... We can take any hints from Ed's S3 spam ability. Holy shit. But the thing is, this guy has sharp eyes on. So he's going to be draining MP like crazy. I mean, what is it? 3% sharp eyes takes with each attack. I don't even know if sharp eyes will be needed. It might be in your best interest. Depending on what, what the difference is in spamming your S3. If you get like an extra 1 to 2 stocks of his s3 without sharp eyes on 
it may be in your best interest to turn that off. But regardless, dude's gonna be dude's gonna be capping like it's no one's business. But now reaching cap is not like the standard of a good unit anymore. Now it's all about uh, skill spam ability, hit counts, if something is skill cancelable, if that attack persists, which I imagine it does uh, based on how it looked. But um, all right, let's take a look at the arc that's coming with him. Here we go. The new arc is oh no. It started to rain. Rest in peace. But anyway, it's the new LR arc and its attribute at max level. Fire skill damage plus 35%. And when MP is used, restore unit by 20 restore unit HP by 25 times the MP used. So 80. Can we just do that real quick? I think Ed's. Ed's uh, skill, if you use his skill 3 with alchemy, it uses 80 MP. So you're healing 2,000 HP per usage. Alright. When an ally is incapacitated, damage plus 100% for the next special used. Eh, that part's not too crazy. This is very much designed for Roy. I don't see it being super meta in other areas and on top of other characters in the game. But the learnable skills. Skill 1 boost. SET recovery speed is minus 10%, but damage plus 20% for the first skill, upper left skill. Hmm. Okay, we're getting skill boosts. So, is this their attempt to help with multipliers on certain units, right? Because that's also a consideration that you don't have in front of your face until you know it's a thing, is that each unit has independent multipliers in their individual skills. So that was one of the reasons why Tweaks and Crypt on the podcast were saying the older units are kind of, they're not salvageable. They can't be saved, even with these buffs, because... Even if you give them these skills, their multipliers, their hit counts are still shit compared to units nowadays. But here, I mean, skill one boost, you slap that on one of them. You have minus 10% SCT recovery speed, but honestly, that's not so much a big deal anymore. With the amount of ways to charge your skill stocks on demand, uh, you can add 20% extra damage to that S1. This may be the start to something pretty interesting. Next is Fire High Drive it comes with, so incredible skill. Fire attack, uh, fire physical attack and special power plus 30%. We're getting another high drive, which is great. Yes, it's raining. When an ally is incapacitated, apply an int plus 30% buff to unit. Yeah, this dude is scaling off of intelligence all day. It also comes with MP up 3, fast aura, and fire attack raise. So actually, for a fire unit, this comes with some of the best learnable skills that I think we've seen on an arc. For a fire unit, this, this arc is not bad at all. It's pretty decent, I would say. The when ally is incapacitated, damage plus 100% for the next special used is meh. Because specials are... They take too long, man. They just take too long. That's the problem. I'd rather use my skills. They need to do something about that. Specials don't do enough damage to, like, warrant how long they take compared to what you can do with your S1 through 3 nowadays. But some really good learnable skills. We'll have to see what the AER looks like tomorrow in game uh, because the maintenance is tonight, y'all. Roy and this arc will be live in the game tomorrow. And that'll be interesting. I still, I will probably go for Roy. If I get Roy, I'll probably go back to the other arc and chase that from part one. So in part one, they gave us the busted LR arc. In part two, they're giving us the busted Roy. So, damn. So I just checked out in-game to see if we were getting any interesting notices. Uh, if we look at July 21st, it's actually not too crazy. 
We're not getting a lot of stuff, which is kind of sad, right? We're getting the addition of Roy Mustang and the new arc. The start of the collab gotcha part two, start of the second collaboration login bonus, uh, updates to the shop, and addition of and end half quests, extra challenges, and rewards to the other world alchemist event. Uh, so we're also getting, like it said, the stat power up campaign, which is going to bring us these are going away the special training special uh, skill study soul field that's going away and we're getting super soul accumulation and the grand ability gauge which will be a big deal for newer players guys don't sleep on this make sure to clear it three times a day just to soak up all of the crystals that you can get from this uh, if you just kind of focus on red and purples and then put all of your auto farming efforts into IGC3. That's how I've been managing my colored crystals for the longest time. And it hasn't been too big of an issue. A lot of people ask me, you know, what stages do I farm green crystals? What stages do I farm purple crystals? I don't know because I've never needed to find out. I kind of just go with that strategy. I farm IGC3. That gives me my blue and green. And then whenever grand ability gate comes around, I just farm the heck out of red and purple, uh, the red and purple stages. So that's how I manage my colored crystals. Also, super soul accumulation. This is huge because once a day you get 50 souls for any unit. Make sure to be using it on non-collab units, guys. Ed, Alphonse, and I imagine Roy will be <laughs> able to be built out day one with the generosity that they have shown in this collab event so make sure to use the super soul accumulation for other units like if you're a new player you need souls for tyria go ahead and use her there right run one tyria and one support friend unit in order to clear the stage and take care of business so we're getting those two things which is interesting uh, the only other thing i wanted to point out something that i'm very excited for is that if we check the collab uh schedule and go down we are finally getting this sticker right here. The oh no. Oh my goodness, I am so excited to use this. And I imagine it's not going to make any difference. It's only going to add a layer of toxicity to multiplayer. And I can't wait. Oh, whatever someone's popping a god heal unnecessarily or they're using their special when it's absolutely not needed. I'm gonna be spamming the hell out of this sticker. I'm just let y'all know your boy's gonna be toxic. I'm sorry, but not really uh, Everything else here, right? We're getting the second part of the login bonus, which will give us the part two collab tickets uh, and just another 1300 crystals after seven days and uh, From the equipments, right? We're gonna get the end half of the event So it'll introduce Hawkeye's gun and then this military uniform since we already have the other three already these will be enhanceable to plus 40 uh, I don't remember. Do they lay out the details of what they look like? They do. So we can actually see that the Hawkeye's gun, right? It will be a machine weapon. Chance for regular attacks to insta-kill. And it gives a plus 124 to strength, plus 35 to mind. I imagine that's at plus 40. Yeah, see, these are definitely all the stats at plus 40. Uh, so not a bad weapon at all, I'd say. This is actually, this may help a lot of people. It, we'll have to see what the chance is. Uh, we'll wait for the data miners to get that exact percentage. But if you don't have Death God and you're struggling in, a, uh, not Arena, in Tower of Trials, this might come into use there. Uh, then we've got the Cloth Armor here. Chance to evade regular attacks. Strength 32, Defense 101, Int 29, Mind 70. Earth Resistance plus 5. This is trash. This is garbage. Who came up with this trait? Who came up with this trait? At the Ida's office. What? Chance to evade regular attacks? Are you kidding me? Yeah, no, you can keep that, my friend. You can keep that. Um, that's terrible. <laughs> but other than that, guys, there's not really anything else I'm super excited for. I could have sworn they mentioned something about a stage where it will be hordes of enemies that we have to take on. I don't know if it will be some sort of time trial. I can't remember. I thought I, I thought I remembered Kit saying something, but nothing in these patch notes are telling me that it, it, something like that is coming. Unless it's just going to be one of the extra challenge missions in the second part of the event quest. Uh, don't get me wrong. Ed is incredible. Roy looks like he's going to be incredible. But um, I'm going to have to shout out. Someone in the comments.
from before the collab started, Chris Brown, I conceded to you in a comment on my last video, but I'm just going to say on camera, you know, I told him, let's just wait until the collab is in game to make our final judgments on it because he was very pessimistic about it. But man, if this is all it's going to be, some more quests here and then another character, as far as a collab event overall, getting that lackluster stamp at the moment. Like I said in my video yesterday, I didn't play much over the weekend and I don't think I missed much. At this point, all I can do, really, is farm up more souls for Edward and Al in, ante in anticipation for Awakenings 7 and 8. That's not exciting content. <laughs> you know, so, kind of rough. The game overall, like I said, there's plenty to do. I've got plenty of materials to still farm in multiplayer, but, I mean, multiplayer is going to be here with or without the collab event, so... Sadly, I'm surprised they didn't incorporate some kind of multiplayer uh, event with this collab. Kind of feels bad. But like I said, we'll get exactly what's coming tomorrow. So take what I said there with a grain of salt. But those are my sentiments at the moment. And uh, I'm curious to see what you guys think. Kind of a, a Debbie Downer way to end the video because Roy looks absolutely disgusting. But we'll have to see what he's really like when he drops. So I'm excited for that. You already know I'm excited to talk with the boys on Thursday in the podcast about what part two brings. And I think that's all I got for y'all this time. So like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification to get notified anytime I drop content on LC. And thank y'all for watching. If you're wondering what we're using here, LD Player. I am an affiliate with them. I've got my link in the description. If you're looking for a way to play the game on your PC, not optimized, not going to be better than a device like an iPhone 12 or something like that, but it is a way to auto farm on your PC so you're not burning up your phone's battery uh, until we get the official Steam client that they teased us. These emulators are all we have, so I recommend LD Player for the time being. Uh, and boom, right there. There's my little plug for the video. If you go and download it with the link below, help support your boy Buddha. Download it, play it the day after, and you get Buddha some extra cash completely for free on your end. So, again, thank you all for watching. And with all that being said, y'all know what we say. Work hard, play harder. See you in the next video.